This is episode one with Eric Mitchell. This is the Millerpreneur Podcast, the show for military veterans who are passionate about entrepreneurship. Together, we'll learn from veterans who use their military experience to give them an advantage in business. I'll show you how to apply their wisdom and overcome your fears while you transition out of the military and begin your journey as an entrepreneur. With me today, I've got the founder, creative genius, and unstoppable force behind Social Hangout, Eric L. Mitchell. He's never been accused of being shy. This hard-charging United States Marine attacks issues with the same enthusiasm and drive he displayed while defending our country. Well known within the SaaS community and tech circles, Eric is no stranger to the Silicon Valley playbook. Having been a founder, acquired twice, and built startups from the ground up, passion is the word that best describes Eric Mitchell who currently advises several tech startups and is instrumental in their success. Eric spends his free time rooting winners, the San Francisco Giants, and he paid me to say that. Yes. Something wrong with saying that, by the way. Welcome to the show, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks a bunch there, Dan. I appreciate being on here. It's always weird as the Marine. You do outrank me when I was in the Corps, so I always do want to call you Gunny, not Dan. So it always throws me for a loop. So, But it's great to be here. I'm excited. Uh, I always laugh when people read my bio, so sorry, I was chuckling during that whole thing. Hey, it's a pretty good bio if you ask me, so awesome. Thank you. Well, hey, uh, before we get going into the show and learning a little bit more about you and kind of your, your transition out of the military and your journey uh, in the tech world and everything in between, uh, let's start out with one of your favorite quotes. One of my favorite quotes, I love Simon Sinek uh, as Everyone probably who's ever listened to Social Hangout knows I love to talk and quote Simon Sinek. Uh, one of my favorite ones that he talks about is, uh, my favorite one that comes to mind is, only the ones who fear failure are those who have never tasted it. I love that because you have to fail to succeed, and I've learned that throughout you know my entire life. So it's always one of my favorite ones that comes to mind. Awesome. So let's, uh, let's get started by talking about you and your service in the military and your current career, um, basically everything in between. So you started out, you joined the Marine Corps. Why did you join? Why did I join? You know what? I didn't think I was ready to go to college. I was living in Folsom, California. I graduated from Folsom High School. I was recruited out of the Fair Oaks office in uh, Sacramento, California. <laughs> My recruiter's name was Sergeant Stim. And he was Motor T. Err. And I for sure wasn't going to be Motor T. Uh, wasn't going to get a college scholarship for football. I did play football at Folsom. Uh, joined the Marine Corps because it was the only branch I ever really liked. I, I grew up um, most of my life outside of or the Naval uh, Training Center in Orlando. And my grandparents moved to uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, which is home of, of course, as all jarheads out there know, home of the Special Marines at Paris Island. Uh, so I've been, I grew up on that recruit depot as a kid. I go spend summers with my grandfather who worked for Martin Marietta after he retired from the army. And we went to Paris Island all the time for the PX and the commissary. So I love the Marine Corps. They have the Iwo Jima Memorial there. I can send you some photos if you ever want to share. You can share them. I have like a Miami Vice shirt on and I'm underneath this F4 Phantom Marine Corps fighter, uh, that's there on, that used to be there. I don't think it's there. When my brother graduated, yes, we have second generation Marines in my family. When he graduated from Paris Island, it was not there, but the Iwo Jima Memorial was still there. But I've always wanted to be a Marine, so I joined because I was sold the, the fruit of the labor. It's the best branch to be in. Uh, I still think that to this very moment of my life, but at the time, it was even better. I mean, come on. You look at our uniforms. We just look good. So, so yeah, you're, that's why I joined. So what was your job? I was an 0311. I was an infantry. I was that guy who signed the guarantee contract to go infantry, and hurrah, I was. So I was an 0311, very proud of that. Uh, stopped me a lot to this day. I mean, adapt and overcome. Everybody talks and whines about having something bad. And trust me, until you've been an 11, you haven't had it bad. You don't even know what bad is. I'm like, please, let me talk to you about things that we've done as 11s. Nice. So you're an 0311 infantry guy, ground pounder, oh, yeah. tough as nails. So they say. So they say. Yes. Um, is there a particular experience that you had that, I mean, let's, let's really turn back the, the clock here. 
Is there an you experience know, that you had that sh helped shape you into the man you are today? Just maybe like it, we always learn from those adversity, uh, adverse experiences, those challenges, you know, where you were really forced to, you know, come come to the surface with something. Uh, is there a particular moment that you had? You know, there is. I mean, it's funny. People would say it would be any other moment. But for me, it it goes back to training, right? We do so much as Marines. But one, it seems like our training is where it's like the toughest, right? Because that's where you really, as you're a younger Marine, it really like takes that mental mold out of you. I mean, I was an athlete in high school. You know, we had hell week. You know, we put on the helmet. We ran until we puked. I mean, that you know, that was typical. But getting in the Marine Corps was different. And I remember, uh, I believe both of us are Hawaii Marines, K-Bay Marines. So, uh, I went to PTA when I was in the Marine Corps, uh, which is the Pakalua training area for those of you that are playing at home that aren't Marines. Uh, great place. Uh, they actually train for Iwo Jima there because the lava rocks and the lava dogs. But we have this motivated uh, Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Bates, is in fact, is his name. He was the Lieutenant Gray, was our head man in charge of 2 3 back in the day. And he had this great idea to take a McCress hike from the docks at Hilo all the way up to PTA, which is over 25 miles, through some ranch land and do this as a forced march. And I was just a brand new fire team leader and just trying to figure it out. Right? I was like 19 and here I am in charge of these Marines, right? And I even had like some salty dogs in there. And you know, salty dogs are like, I don't care. I'm just there, you know, do whatever. And I remember I really had to suck it up and like move guys along. And it was funny to watch myself where you were picking up Marines and actually moving them and doing without even thinking. Like, their guys are falling out. You know how hikes are, especially as ground pounders. That's what we do. We move at a fast clip. It's like we're jogging, but we're walking. And I remember just moving and, like, somebody would fall out and I grab their pack and throw it on. Or you're, like, walking with a saw and you're like, okay, seriously, this is a lot of weight. But I was so motivated to do it because I just didn't want to fail. And... It really, that moment, I remember, I go, it goes all the way back to the, here I am, some 19-year-old with a saw in my back, and, you know, I, I'm carrying that, and I got this pack, and I got this Marine who's, like, tow truck to me, right? He's, like, wrapped up into my straps on my, on, my, on my Alice pack, and I'm just pulling him along, and I remember that now. Here I am, you know, in my late 30s, and I remember that day vividly of pulling those Marines along and making sure my fire team, these guys who couldn't do it, making sure that we always had our strongest, you know, we were always as strong as our weakest link. We were never going to fail. And, and that's carried me actually through life today. I mean, that's never changed. So that sense of, of teamwork and, and oh, yeah. camaraderie. I, and it's a sense of teamwork, and it's also a sense of believing that it's funny. Uh, uh, Kevin Spacey said a quote a couple of months, it was like two years ago at a marketing conference, odd, but I love it because he said when you reach a certain plateau, you say, yep, need to send the elevator back down. Another quote from Eric. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But I totally believe that even now as I look at it, it was always like I reached a certain plateau as a fire team leader, and I was grabbing my guys and bringing them back up. Because the last thing you want, because you know what rolls downhill in the Marine Corps, you don't want anybody to catch flack, so you grabbed your guys and you kept going. Because I always wanted everybody to be successful and everybody to be part of the team. And that's how you did it, because somebody would do it for me. Someone did it for me, trust me. I remember when I was brand new to the fleet, and, you know, I can't brag that I like running, because I don't, but uh, especially running with officers is not fun, and I was falling out, and somebody said, grab the back of my shirt, and I ran with him until I, my poor little legs didn't know what they were doing, I was hanging onto the back of his shirt, pulling back, and his I think he had like a red mark on his neck from me dragging him, but that's just basically things I remember, so... So what I did, it's what, you know, it's carried me to this moment in my life is always making sure I take care of others. Awesome. Awesome. So what was your reason for transitioning out? Well, I guess we never really identified how much time you served. And so you did four years? I did the four. You did the yes. four? Four oh, was yes. enough and you transitioned <laughs> out? Yes. Why, why I, did you transition out? I was done. Uh, you know, I, I loved... I loved every minute I was a Marine, but it was time. I had a daughter uh, uh, from a previous marriage, and I just wanted to be with her. It was, you know, the have a child, and the fear was going off into combat and something bad happening and not being able to be there for her. So I got out of the Marine Corps and thought I had these grandioso ideas of sold the dream of what would happen when I got out, right? You know, there's just. Yeah, the grass oh, is always every, greener, right? 
everybody will hire me. I'm a Marine. And, you know, it's still believing your recruiter after all those years of everybody sees the Marine and they see it on your resume and that that's what people want. Yeah. We all know the truth on that. <laughs> right. I mean, there's there's yeah. so many people transitioning out. The reality is, is, is there's got to be a, a solid game game plan in place. And we've talked about this offline uh, before, mm -hmm. but the transition assistance program, while it is is good, it's still trapped trap back in the 1990s, you know, uh, to say the least, as far as mm -hmm. resumes and, and getting everything prepped. I, I would say that, um, and we, we'll talk about this, this a little bit later on, mm -hmm. but networking is huge mm -hmm. and leveraging, you know, the networks that we've got uh, in place or creating one that's in place because a lot of times as a marine you know you're focused on your fellow marines right mm -hmm. maybe you're not branching out uh maybe as much as you should and, and talking to other folks or you know i i've spoken with many marines and they basically told me that you know i'm still trying to figure out what i want to do when i grow up you know and i'd say that that is one of those things that we're all kind of uh struggling with as well it's a very true, it's a very true statement i mean I mean, one of the hardest things, and I mean, I've talked to Marines. I mean, I have a brother who did eight years as a Marine uh, out of Miramar. He was an air winger. And, I mean, he did four tours over in Afghanistan. I mean, just, you know, he's been in, you know, he did, he's done way more tours than I ever did. And, you know, that was his big question to me is what's it like when I get out? And I've watched, I watched, you know, so I had my experience getting out and then I watched his experience. So, I know what you're talking about, and I feel the pain for these Marines. I mean, just everybody from every branch, because it sucks. It's yeah. like it's like we're looking at 1980, and we're like, that's how we should still do it. And it's like, oh, no, guess what we have now? We have things called cell phones and social media. I mean, podcasting around. So I think that's a, to me, it's a big issue that people haven't talked about. When people ask about, I mean, people ask me about, oh, how was your transition? Like, it's supposed to be a bed of roses, and we get out and... There's jobs waiting for us. There's like this, you know, the door opens on your last day in the Marines. And, oh, there's no. It's not that way. Still, I mean, it sucks. So let's talk about that for a minute. So what kind of fears did you have when you got out? Or was it maybe a lack of fear that might have been most concerning? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's funny that you, you say it that way. I, I, I had no fear getting out, right? I thought for sure I would get out and everything would be fine. There would be no issues. Uh, I would have a job everywhere I applied. I would be fighting people off with a stick to have a job. That, that's what I generally believed, right? I went to TAP. You know, TAP told me these things. You know, hey, don't worry. When you get out, people are going to hear that you're a Marine. They're going to see it on your resume. They're going to reflect your college credits. They're going to reflect that you PT is PE credits in college. I mean, come on. I heard them all, right? And, you know, I did our little, I forget whether the Marine Corps little red booklets that we did that we got college for and we read all those. And the MCIs, yeah. The MCIs, yes. And I, when I got out, I had zero fear. I came out, I was like, literally there was no fear to get out. I was like, I got this. That can't be that hard. I got friends in high school that they graduated and they got, you know, they're doing big things. I could do the same thing. I'm a Marine. It, it's funny how we take being a Marine, which is a beautiful, wonderful title that I'll never lose, but it really doesn't, you know, spin itself out so well when you get out. People are like that's right. great. Thank you for your service. <laughs> which is Ooh. which is great. Which is great. It doesn't necessarily pay the bills. No, I can't put thank you for your service in my Bank of America account. You're absolutely correct. Right. So when you were getting out, uh, how did you overcome that rejection of you know going out and applying for jobs and you know it wasn't as easy as as it seemed like. It, you know, it was hard. Uh, not going to lie. I mean, it was like you, there was times that I legitimately thought I was going to ask to come back into the Marine, you know, come back in active duty. Uh, there was a time I walked into an Army recruiter's office. Oh, wow. And, and talked about joining. And I was this close for those playing at home. I'm showing my little inch finger. I, I was that I was that close. I mean, I thought of I missed it. It was like you get so used to the structure that we live in, right? We get up in the morning, we brush our teeth, we go to the chow hall, we come back, we do 11 stuff, we do whatever, right? And then it's our day structured and then 1600 comes around, it's Liberty Call and you're off. And when you're stationed in Hawaii, it's not bad. You're going to Waikiki. I had a Jeep, 
I, then I traded that in for a motorcycle and I missed that because here I was responsible. I had to pay for my own food. Rent was crazy because I live in California. It's always, you know, all these things that you didn't take into and rejection of getting that job and thinking that here's this huge opportunity for a job and then there's nothing there, right? They're telling you no and you've almost, you're not used to hearing no, right? You went into your recruiter's office, you signed some paperwork, you took your ASVAB, you found out what you're qualified for. You were told yes. The whole time you had this recruiter telling you yes. So that was my first job, right? Was being a Marine. And here I was trying to get other jobs and being told no. I'm like, wait a minute, nobody tells me no. I went into my recruiter's office. I have an ASVAB score. I serve this country. And it was difficult. I'm not going to lie. I spent a lot of time. I mean, it was it was humbling. Uh, you know, it really knocked you down a peg from what we PT about our sing songs, you know, the brotherhood that we all have. And when you're all alone, it's the, it's the loneliest time of your life because you don't have your brothers that you're around, especially as an 11. It's like a frat house. You know that. Right. And, and it, it, you're alone. You're period. Nobody understands how alone you feel because you've always had someone to talk to in your life as a Marine. And now you're like sitting there like, great. No. Got to go do it again. I mean, you adapt and overcome, but there is that point. Just like, you know, I, I talked about it on Friday on my own show. Same thing. It's like you get beat down. You do go to your knee, right? Your nose is bloodied. You want to quit. But thank God I'm a Marine. I pop back up, right? I mean, adapt and overcome. That's what we do. Elevens, we're good at that. So that's how I felt about it. So obviously you did overcome those challenges. Uh, tell us a little bit about your where things started to pick back up and you started to see some success. You know, it was funny. I uh, I went and I, I met my wife that I've been with for many, many years now. And her father uh, was a longshoreman. And he knew I was looking for work and wanted to boost my, you know, boost my morale. There's good money out there. So I actually knew I wanted to get into tech. But to do that, I got a job out working uh, at the Port of Stockton, ILW Local 54. And my father-in-law got me out there. I stood on a line on a January morning many, many moons ago after I got out and got picked, hand-picked. The guy stuck his hand out the window and said, you and my father-in-law, big gigantic man who left us this uh, back, and unfortunately on March second we lost him to cancer. But this big burly, looks like Mr. Incredible Man, standing behind me, and the guy's like, "Pick me!" And I went up there, and he's like, "Don't screw this up!" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, oh my god! Like I'm gonna screw this up. I'm working out on the waterfront." So I remember it. I mean, I'm gonna tell the story, then I'll, it'll get to a point. But I remember it. we went out. It was a cold, cold, cold morning. And of course, I don't have, you know, I have my freaking, you know, whatever gear I happen to acquire when I got out of the Marine Corps, I still had, right? But you're not allowed to wear camouflage on the waterfront because it looks kind of goofy when you need to be in a bright lately spot. So I remember we went over to the side of the ship and they did the safety meeting and there was this old, 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 like old dude, just like really old, had a cigar in his mouth, a cowboy hard hat. And they're all in, you know, they're like, today we got some new guys on the dock. And he's like... What's your excuse? He's like, you're, uh, my father-in-law's name, last name was Erlinson. Bruce Erlinson was his name. And uh, <laughs> he goes, you're Erlinson's boy. I'm like, well, I'm his son-in-law. He's like, where you been? And I said, I, I'm a Marine. <laughs> he looked at me. He goes, oh, you're one of them new Marines. And I mean, I, and I looked at him. I go, you a Marine? He's like, was. And I go, oh, you're one of those Marines. Did you ride around on the horses? And that's why we have the name Leatherneck, because you rode around and had that on. And it caused like this whole like relationship to be built. Like all of a sudden I had trust amongst these folks because I had it. That moment in time proved to me that I could take my humor, my ability to, to communicate and go somewhere. Uh, it was a few weeks after that that I actually was offered a job at a company called WebEx. Oh, wow. uh, th that was before. But I got into technology. I have a gift for Gab. So I hopped on the phone. I started the lowest right there. Like, would you like to start here? And mind you, this is in the early 2000s when like technology was just booming, right? Yeah. And uh, I went in there and I had to call. I had to just do calls and call companies and set up appointments for salespeople. But it was the most fun I ever had. I get to talk to people all day long and on video. It was like the first time video was done. So I'm talking to people I'm like, hey, this is why you use it. I lasted how long? I was like six weeks I did that job that I was asked to come up and be in sales. Wow. So it was just like, and I felt like this love, right? Uh, number one, most money I've ever made. Two, as the Marine in me, there was an open kitchen. And for those of you playing at home that don't know what an open kitchen is, that's all the food and soda and snacks any human being can eat. And it was free. That was awesome. Nice. It was, 
Yeah, I didn't think about the port, but hey, for me, it was nice, right? Hey, look, they're going to feed me. And then I did really good, and people would drop off like Amazon gift cards on my desk. And I'd like, oh, it's 20, it was $500. I remember that. I was like, oh, look at this. Somebody just gave me $500. I remember what that like would have been like in the, you know, when I, I was related to everything back to what it would have been like when I was in the Marines. So that's really when I saw the turn is I started getting into the ability to go into sales. I like sales a lot. Uh, that's my background is sales. And I come from a long lineage of sales. So going in and doing that was kind of the eye opening that, okay, they're accepting me of this. And then I actually found out I was working around some other Marines. So it was kind of cool to sit across from other Marines and we had our camaraderie. So it was kind of cool to see other Marines being successful at the same time. So we could all talk about it. And, you know, we were, we had, we're not gonna lie. We were like a little like click. It was like, you know, the jarhead click. We went and watched Band of Brothers when it came out. That's what we did. You know, go over to somebody's house and binge watch the box set collection of Band of Brothers. Nice. So, nice. so there's like instant rapport there. Mm -hmm. And of we've, we have that, you know, we, uh, we met online Yep. and I reached out to you. I'm like, Hey Eric, I'm transitioning out of the military. Would you mind talking to me for a few minutes? I'd, I'd yeah. like to learn more about what you're doing. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just kind of went from there. We hung out at social media marketing world together, mm -hmm. which was, which was an awesome experience. Great opportunity. Um, but yeah, I mean, serving in the military definitely has, you know, it's benefits in that regard because you can have that instant rapport with somebody and, and build a relationship within literally a matter of minutes. And that's not an exaggeration. So yeah. serving in the military is definitely, you know, like I can tell just how passionate you are when you talk about the Marine Corps, you'll never, ever, 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 ever regret that experience. And, and nor will I, um, <laughs> I always still think Marine, if I, if it's funny, I yes. have Dakota Myers Medal of Honor coin on my desk, and I have a Marine Corps chill puck, two of my favorite things, and I was not, I was holding those in my hand long before you started saying that, so I was like laughing. I always have something Marine near me, so you're absolutely correct. Absolutely. So, it will never leave us, uh, and it's important that we reach out and try and cultivate those relationships. What, what are some ways that you would recommend uh, going out and doing that? You know, uh, there's really it's hard i mean there's really not a lot of programs out there for our active duty that are transitioning out and we're doing it in record numbers uh the government is taking you know cutting out the military which don't get me started on that point but you have to go out and find twitter chats you need to find you know get on social media and ask around and see who's out there doing it i know uh i know i'm working on a project right now i, I know that you're you've discussed it with me and you're actually with us. Uh, but I have folks at IBM, at LinkedIn, Coco Sexton, who's an uh, Army Reserves, uh, retired Army, he's involved in it. Uh, we've got several other folks involved, IBM, LinkedIn, uh, we're going to get several others. All the big social influencers out there, Ted Rubin, Brian Kramer, Brian Fanzo, Daniel Newman, to name just a few, uh, that all want to help Michelle Killebrew. I want to give her some love. Uh, but all these folks want to do it. So you just have to reach out and find out who's doing it. I mean, it's not hard. Most of us are very loud. Podcasts like this help. Uh, you have to look at it. This is, a, I mean, the unique thing, and, I, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Uh, in the last 10 years, we've really been able to dictate where, how we, we control our own destiny. And I always tell people, you know, you control your own destiny. You're the hero of your own movie. Who cares about your past failures? Who cares about that? Be, be the hero of today, right now, what you control today. And now we've never had the opportunity, but now you can. You can pick what you watch, what you listen to, the podcast you listen to, the shows you watch, everything. So you ha you can go look for it. It's there. I mean, this podcast is awesome because everybody from every branch can come to it. It doesn't matter if they're not as awesome as the Marine Corps, but they could come listen to this, and that's what you need to do. And it's just getting the word out there to do it, so you really have to put it out everywhere. Be where your customers are. I mean, that's, I think, the biggest challenge is getting this in front of our current active duty warriors that are coming out into the work field and knowing that there's other folks out there that really care about them because it's not advertised. Brands don't talk about it. Definitely the Marine Corps or TAPS doesn't talk about it, and the government doesn't talk about it. They're like, oh, whatever, go out, do your job. You know, not everybody wants to be a cop when they get out. And that's what everybody kind of like, you know, points their direction towards, oh, you're going to be a cop because you were definitely in the military and you held a gun. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. It is. And I've, uh, I've seen that. I've seen a lot of Marines that are, that are you know, relying on the old system. You know, I had a master gunnery sergeant mention to me that, uh, you know, he had received a job offer 
uh, to do something that just didn't seem quite uh, becoming of him. Uh, I don't want to say what it is, mm -hmm. but it's like, come on, you know, this guy spent 30 years in the Marine Corps, and, and that's the best the civilian society can do. Um, let's talk about education for a minute. I know you're a big Audible guy. Uh, you mentioned podcasts. What is what is a veteran need to be doing in that transition process as far as education goes? You know, always be educating yourself. I can't stress that enough. Uh, read books. Go out and find leadership books. There's some great books out there. Uh, Simon Sinek, number one. For those listening at, in listening to this that are active duty getting out, Simon Sinek is probably one of the biggest fans of the military around. He talks about it constantly, about how, how the things that we do, we don't think about. The way that we line up at the chow hall. Something stupid as that, right? We don't realize that we always do it by rank, right? So we let our juniors eat before us. Uh, Simon talks about things that relate very well to us. So I would say read something by Simon Sinek. Uh, Dan Chapman, always go read a book and try to better yourself. It's funny. I was not a big reader, uh, you know, in my 20s when I was a millennial. But uh, now I look at myself and, and I'm a huge in reading. And I would tell, you know, if I could go back in time, that's something I would have done is grab books. I know, uh, the heck, last name's Maxwell. Can't remember his first name. I've heard him talk and that's embarrassing. But John Maxwell, there we go. John Maxwell. Look at John Maxwell books. Look at leadership books and look at what you're wanting, wanting to do. And kind of focus on that. A uh, great tool for everybody active duty coming out is LinkedIn. Uh, I think LinkedIn is probably one of the most important tools you could do on there. There's great blogs on there. I blog on there. Simon blogs on there. There's great guys. Coca Sexton, Carlos Gill, uh, Jack Kazakowski, Brian Fanzo. I mean, the list goes on. I could list all these, but there's a lot of information out there. Just using LinkedIn as a, as a tool that will help you get just good. Learn how to blog. I mean, basically... Learn what you have out there and find something that you like. This is easy. Audible, I like Audible because I can go run or go to the gym and listen to it in my ears, drive, fall asleep. Uh, podcasts are great when I'm working out because they're digestible, 30 minutes, one hour. I can just you know get through that. So I would try to find all the tools you can and use them because the more tools you have, the more dangerous you are. And, you know, It's kind of put them all in your tool belt like I always tell people. Put all your – every weapon you can, have it all. Just like you're playing a vi these – Guys that play video games, think of that, you know, be it overarmed. I'd rather have more tools than not enough. I'd rather be able to go and clean the armory out and have all of it. And so I have all the books and all my podcasts and all the blogs and video blogs. I mean, there's so much out there. There's a product called Gloop. You can go get 60 seconds of just just bad A. Oh, TED Talks. TED Talks. Listen TED Talks. to TED Talks all day long. Listen to TED Talks. I can list more tools, but you know, those are just the ones I would say right off the bat. If you're getting out and that's something you're like thinking about you need to do and you want to see where everybody's at, that's where it's at. People, you know, there's so many weapons out there, but LinkedIn was probably the weapon of choice because it literally will speed you up there. And there's there's people you could ask. And, you know, one thing I do want to convey on your podcast uh, to any active duty member that's getting out is, I mean, besides contacting Dan, make sure you reach out to me. And I know, Dan, we're going to provide my information at the end. But for veterans, I do want to offer it up. I am there for you. You'll be able to reach out to me, and I'm not going to charge you to talk to me or anything like that. I'm going to help every veteran that I can, even if I lose sleep at night over it. It's an important cause to me. So I want to help people set up their LinkedIn. And the great thing is, is I have LinkedIn behind me. So when I talk about LinkedIn, I have goosebumps talking about it. It means that much to me to help set that up because literally a good LinkedIn opens every door. So yeah. there's so many tools in there and, and we can really help. So that's one of the biggest things is to use those tools that you have right there. And they're free. I haven't listed one tool that costs you money. Right. I mean, except, buy, except buying books. But. Right. And I think that LinkedIn, well, I know that LinkedIn has a program for veterans where they actually give them a free year of job mm -hmm. seeker premium, which is an incredible opportunity that every single veteran that's, that's thinking about transitioning out should be mm -hmm. taking advantage of. And I'll include links to uh, LinkedIn's veterans community and how to do that in the show notes. Awesome. So, um, as far as your favorite book or resource, we talked a little bit about Simon Sinek, but is there anything else that you'd like to mention or suggest? Well, it's funny. I, I'm a, I mean, a leadership, Simon Sinek is great. Uh, I, I mean, I, I like Walter Isaacson. He's written some books, a great bio, autobiography on Steve Jobs. Uh, Tony Heisch, uh, the founder of... Uh, Zappos, great story there. I'm a big fan of uh, 
Brian Kramer, who we both have the privilege of listening to his keynote, H to H. He's got an, a new book called Shareology coming out. And of course, Ted Rubin with Looking People in the Digital Eye. I think all those books to me, it's hard to say which one's my favorite because I kind of live all of them. Uh, my my kind of hashtag is be real. And I think that's where you take that as we're all human. And I think one of the things is there's people out there that want to help and you know better off people. I mean, we all have lived, I mean, I've lived in my Marine shoes, right? I've I put my pants on like every other Marine did. I've done the PT. I've climbed the rope. You know, I crap. I've even have a silver silver bullet bragging right, right? But at the same time, <laughs> but at the same too time, much too much info, too much. But one of the big things I always, you know, it's just there's never enough knowledge out there. And to those books that are out there, you really need to find something that kind of grasps you. And for me, it's the human help. It's the mutual, you know, the being part of a tribe and the mutuality. What we had as Marines, we still have. There's a tribes out there that want to help. So you just have to find those people out there, read their books and see what they stand for. And you'll find what you want as you go. It's one of the hardest things and it takes time. I'm not going to lie. It's taken me a long time to get to where I am today. Uh, but it's all through, I mean, one of the things that you have to be prepared for flat out, and I know this isn't the question you asked, but I'm just going to say it, is you have to be prepared to fail. And I know that's not something some people are like or want to deal with or need to deal with. And it's like, oh, I don't want to fail. But you know what? <laughs> it's going to happen and you have to accept it and you have to look at failure as a strength. Like the more you fail, the stronger you become because you're like, okay, let's not do that again. Let, I mean, Disney was not built overnight. Trust me, Walt Disney screwed up millions of times before he built Walt Disney. I, I mean, it goes even down to like, look at the modern air flight, right? Look how the Wright brothers were not funded. Nobody believed in them and people thought they were crazy, but the White House and every name that was big back in the day funded some other guy who couldn't get off the ground. And that guy ran and hit and ended up killing himself because he couldn't ever fly. He never got to fly, right? He went and hit over in like Norway and it ended up like taking his own life. And look at the Wright brothers, right? Here's guys that didn't have experience. What they have, they had teamwork and a tribe, a belief in mutuality for the same common goal. And I think that's what you have to look at when you're reading your books and the people you associate with is look for people who are real and authentic because you know that you get that when you when you have that your brother and sisterhood when you're in the military, but you don't necessarily have that when you're out of the military. People sometimes are up to no good, uh, and it's and it sucks. But I mean, it's things that you have to live with and you have to figure out. And there's people out there like the LinkedIn program that you spoke about. But for me, you know, I have my mentors. I'm blessed that I have some great mentors out there and people that I look up to. And I know Dan, I've told you this on air before. I've told I put you on I, I do a week a monthly list and I put you and any other Marine that I ever meet on the top of the list ahead of guys like Guy Kawasaki and Jay Bear because the Warriors are our future and there's a ton of tools out there and you just have to be good to people at all times and uh, just help everybody out. So that's you know that's what you do. You grab a book and you make sure that you are doing something to not just better yourself, but better everybody. Right. That's incredibly powerful. And I think if we all adopt okay. that philosophy, you know, this world will be a much better place. So oh, yeah. let's talk real quick about personal branding. How, how would you place that as far as value uh, in the transition process? Personal branding is is probably one of the most important things you could do. And people are probably like, what the hell is personal branding? Uh, go to Eric L. Mitchell on Twitter, and that's personal branding. I branded that out. That's me, right? It speaks volumes. Create a website. There's great tools out there. It's uh, I think it's branded me. Branded.me is a website that you can get for free that people that people will uh, listen to, that you can go build your own website. It's actually built right off your LinkedIn. So your picture drops in there. You don't have to do any code or anything like that, but you can really build your brand so people recognize who you are and who you stand for and what you're looking for and trying to achieve. Uh, those are the big things that people, that you should really go out and do, like build your brand. Uh, but your brand speaks volumes for who you are. Uh, you don't need to necessarily flood the world with, with everything, but remember, your personal brand speaks of you. So, I know it's in our nature to have some things that aren't always uh, normal for folks to have on their Twitter or their Facebook. But you have to remember everything that you're writing is remembered, and employers do go look at what you write on Facebook. So that rant about you know whoever or whomever gets back to you, your things that you say or post or follow on Twitter, it follows you. You want to make sure that you're being professional at all times. Remember, this is your livelihood. People are are looking at these things. The digital way is the way of the future, and that's where everybody's looking. 
So always, you know, make sure your personal brand is always clean, stands for what you stand for, because it's a resemblance of you. It speaks for you even when you're sleeping. Right. It seems like today a lot of people are getting discovered and reached out to uh, that have a good, solid personal brand. And it seems like opportunities are coming to them rather than you know, them seeking out opportunities. So it's really managing that personal brand, making sure the right perception out there uh, is being cast. Uh, for anybody who happens to stumble across any of your profiles, it's extremely important. So on the other hand, the folks who aren't taking advantage of that opportunity of, of really creating a name for themselves, you know, an employer goes to Google their name and they don't find anything, how could that potentially hurt them? It hurts because if you're not found, you don't exist, right? You have just a piece of paper. And resumes are important. I mean, I'm not going to get wrong, you should not have a resume. But most employers, I mean, unless you're, I don't know, live in some podunk town, but it's hard because even the Midwest is becoming meccas for different types of tech or anything. Everybody's going on there. I, I believe that if you look at Fortune 500s, 95% uh, of them are rocking iPads. Uh, the whole, everybody's using technology. So it's no longer like, oh, it's only California and Chicago, New York. I mean, look at it now. We have the Silicon Slopes in Utah. De uh, Denver is a mecca. Uh, Seattle, of course. The whole West Coast is already owned. But I mean, even the middle, you're getting like, uh, we, I have friends that are traveling to Tulsa. Texas is a hotbed. You have South by Southwest. So really, there's no place you can hide the whole, oh, it doesn't matter. It does. People, you need to be able to be found. And if you're not found, you don't exist. And you're going to have to like try to explain why there's no record of you because your whole history has been basically, you know, doing what you've been doing in the Marine Corps. And that's great. But where's Where's what you're doing now? How have you built yourself? What are you doing to make a difference in, in the in the world? Are you do you stand for something? Do you help for a charity? Do you do things for you know? Uh, I don't know anything you do. Show that you're doing something. It's not that hard. I mean, we all overshare. That's what we do. Just take a picture, put it out there. You know, I mean, start small. I'm not saying you have to rock out and have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. Trying to think of all the crazy ones. Pin it, you know, Pinterest. There's something out there. Find something to kind of get you go. A lot of people, I always say, start with Instagram. It's easy. We all take pictures. We love taking pictures, right? Start there and you just kind of see what people are doing. You take pictures of your kids. Maybe throw some moto in there. I throw some moto on mine all the time. I even put Marine Corps moto up there a lot just because it motivates me. And, you know, if it motivates me, it might motivate somebody it's, else. It's so. your profile. You, know? I mean, you, might as well it you own it. You so, like. yeah. so I think the big thing is, is to make sure that you want to be found. If you don't want to be found, it's getting harder and harder to hide in the world. But people are looking. And your resume is important, but people all go look. I mean, one of the number one places I go look when somebody calls me up or as a guest on Social Hangout or as I'm doing business as a consultant is I hop on, uh, used to be called Refresh. It still is called Refresh, uh, .io, but they were acquired this week by LinkedIn. But it's a great tool. You can go on and you can get a lot of information off who people are. I mean, it's hard. If you get somebody who doesn't exist, it makes your job hard and it makes it even harder for you to get a job. Yeah. So let's talk about what you're doing now. Ooh. I don't know what am I doing now. Oh, just kidding. Uh, what am I? Do what am I doing now? After years of being in sales for some successful great companies like EchoSign, uh, I am an independent consultant. What that means, I advise for startups, uh, and I found this awesome little thing. I had this idea several months ago. I popped up one night in the middle of the night, like I do. I grabbed my iPad and opened Evernote and started jotting notes down, and it became something called Social Hangout. And Social Hangout is a th now a three times a week, one hour show live that I bring on some of the hottest names in social uh, business, I don't crap, a little bit of everywhere, famous book writers, just people in general that are doing big things and changing the world and stand for the same thing and have the same mission. And I put them on air and we talk about it. So it gives, there's no more excuses for, oh, I can't afford to go to this conference. I can't afford to go to TED Talks. I don't have time for this. You come on my show, you're going to have them there, and we have it. It's a Twitter chat at the same time, so folks can come on and ask questions and become inspired and become driven. Uh, one of my catch tags, which is funny as a Marine, but it's hashtag IED, which is, stands for not Improvised Explosive Device, but stands for Inspire Epicness Daily. And also my other favorite one is Be Real. It's my new hashtag that I'm rocking today that you can get on my T-shirts. Uh, it's the big thing that we're doing is making sure that people know that you could be inspired. I mean... You know, what good is having a belly if there's no fire in it, right? You know, 
you have to wake up, you have to drink your passion, light a match, and get to work. I think that's one of the big things that I strive for every day. That's why this product is out there. Social Hangout is big. It has a lot of character into it. Uh, Dan, you watched me tape an episode just two weeks ago at Social Media Marketing World. It's fun. It, it's uh, it's amazing that I call it work, but we're actually driving. You know, that's what we're doing on the personal side. Social Hangout as a business side, it amplifies brands' messages. Uh, a lot of brands that are out there don't have the reach because you have a brand, right? You have a, I don't want to pinpoint, so we'll say Acme Company, right? Acme Company is trying to get their name out, but it doesn't really get anywhere, right? Because you expect Acme Company to spend millions of dollars to you know, have the Roadrunner blow himself up. But if somebody else is helping say, hey, look, the Roadrunner keeps blowing himself up, that helps out, right? We're spending, sending their message, we're spending them, we're bringing them on, we have their founder on, and the founder's talking about how their product is and really amplifies their message so people are going. So, you know, a couple companies that I advise for have really seen just gigantic growth because we're just talking about their brand and using it in real life and saying, hey, go out and do it. And it makes a difference. Brands like that, and they're literally coming in droves to say, hey, Eric, can you, can Social Hangout help us out? Can we come on your show? Can you help with our social media? Can you help us get it out there? Because it's embarrassing that Social Hangout's been coming up on six months just doing our 28th episode uh, coming up and the one of the big things is uh, there's companies that I that social hangout tweets more than companies that have been around for three years with millions of dollars in the bank they just haven't focused on it so we're really I mean there one stat we had in February which is our bragging rights was in 25 days we were mentioned was I think it was 23,000 times in, in less than 20 days and, and, and to put that in perspective, if you're playing at home, that was more mentions than the brand Tide, Big Bad Tide, who has millions of dollars in the bank. Uh, another thing that Social Hangout does that's different than most people is that we trend nationally. We've trended 12 times. The last time we trended was on Good Friday, and we trended for seven hours nationally. Jimmy Fallon doesn't do that. So people are listening, and it's the topics that we talk about, so it's cool to see that people are talking about relationships and being real. And, and that trended for seven hours. That's that's huge. So <laughs> trust me. It, and if I can do it, anybody can do it. That's one thing. That's for sure. I'm just you know, I'm just a normal person who's still in shock when somebody says great things. I mean, you saw oh, when we were at Social Media Marketing World, that guy came up and he was like, I'm trying not to make fun of him right now, but it's hard when he was like, I know you're from your voice. <laughs> that's, that's kind of creepy. But you're a fan, so let me take your picture. Uh, and give you a chill puck. Uh, but I mean, it's just weird because I'm just don't, I'm not used to it still. I, uh, I guess it's the humbleness that we're taught in the military still coming through. It's like, great, people like my show. Yeah, you know, I'm going to keep doing it because I generally do it because I love it and I know I'm helping people and that's all that really matters. Awesome. Well, is, how can we get in touch with you? And yeah, how can we get in touch with you? Oh, well, you you can write a letter. No, it's like boot camp. You know, write your no. <laughs> Just write it out. No, uh, my website is ericlmitchell.com. Uh, the L stands for Lawton. I know people are always wondering. Lawton is my grandfather's last name. He's a retired full bird colonel, United States Army, fought in World War II in Vietnam. So much love for him. He's passed on, but I carry his middle name. That's why I put it in all my signatures. So ericlmitchell.com. You can reach me at socialhangoutteam.com. Uh, you can check out. We have our blogs. All our shows are live, are streamed there, so you can check those out. Uh, you can reach me on SoundCloud. I'm on SoundCloud. I'm on iTunes. I'm on Stitcher. Uh, social media, you can reach me on Twitter at, at ericlmitchell.com. You can reach me at, at socialdevildog also, and you can reach me on Social Hangout. I'll answer any one of those. I'm always there. Send a message there. If you just want to email me, that's ericlmitchell at gmail.com. Hey, and I'll even give out my phone number. If you want to call me, 408-206-9549. Call me. Leave me a message if I don't answer. Try not to call after midnight, and please, no heavy breathing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, run out and do all those. I'm not afraid to give out that information. I want to help as many people as I can. Uh, so that's my mission in life is to help as many people as I can. There's some great folks out there that if I can't help you, I can point you in the right direction and get people to help. Uh, I want to be overwhelmed. I want to make this something that's not a, uh, a hidden subject from the world. I feel right now it's hidden. So it's a big issue. This is Dan Evans, and I'd like to personally thank you for listening to this interview with Eric Mitchell and also for listening to the very first episode of the Millipreneur podcast, the show for transitioning veterans. For more about me and the show, including articles, tips, and information, 
visit danevansonline.com.